I'm Angela Thomas, partner consumer and retail at Dining Consulting in India. Headquartered in Germany, Dining Consulting is one of the world's leading executive search and leadership consulting firms. I'm thrilled to have uh, Sanjoy Malik with me today. Sanjoy currently leads the South Asia business of Metro Toledo, a precision instruments company. Prior to joining Metro Toledo in October 2020, Sanjoy spent 15 years with a global healthcare company, Johnson & Johnson, in varied commercial and regional roles across India, Japan, and Vietnam. Sanjoy started his career in the consumer products industry after graduating from IIMA. Uh, during his 28-year-plus career, Sanjoy has demonstrated great success in managing diverse businesses across multiple geographies. Uh, he's a passionate person, uh, passionate about developing high-performance teams, and is a strong believer in the philosophy of growing business by growing people uh, that he invited from one of his mentors. Uh, welcome, Sanjoy, to the uh, Dining the Leadership Talk series. Thanks, Angela. Thanks for inviting me. Lovely. As you know, today's theme is is emotional intelligence, Sanjoy. Um, and and I I would like to start with something Aristotle quoted. I think it sort of uh, was relevant to the context. Uh, he said, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Uh, and I think that sort of sticks to the theme that we have. And with that said, uh, I would like to start with my first question. Uh, Sanjoy, what does emotional intelligence mean to you in the context of leadership? Oh, well, uh... I would describe uh, emotional intelligence on being able to put oneself in another person's shoes and uh, look at and uh, I would say feel for things from the other person's perspective. Uh, and Angela, considering the you know VUCA world that we are living in, and also the fact that uh, you know the nature of work, uh, workforce, and even workplaces, uh, which have changed so much over the recent past. I believe uh, emotional intelligence is a very, very important quality for any leader to be successful. Uh, in the context of uh, today's leadership, uh, to me, I think uh, emotional intelligence is actually being your authentic self, uh, which means that uh, you are empathetic or sensitive, uh, you are self-aware, and uh, I think uh, most importantly, you really practice yeah, the habit of active uh, listening. So I would say, you know, these are some of the elements which constitute emotional intelligence. And uh, I cannot uh, emphasize the importance of, of this piece in the overall leadership context today. Interestingly, you said it's it's about being authentic and it's also about being self-aware. Uh, and being self-aware sometimes also means revealing your vulnerable side. And leaders are not meant to be vulnerable or rather show their vulnerable side. Uh, do you think that uh, uh, sometimes uh, comes in the way uh, of leaders to be able to demonstrate confidence um, or control while dealing with situations of crisis and conflicts? Well, the uh, way I would answer this, Angela, is that I think uh, being uh, self-aware, I think, allows me to be more inclusive and curious as a leader. So I think uh, hearing different voices, wanting to learn from others and exploring, uh, I say, new thoughts and ideas I think are ways of expressing vulnerability, right? And especially uh, somebody like me who just joined a new company, switched industries, switched countries. Uh, I think, uh, you know, companies and employees recognize that things have changed and, 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 and the leader necessarily doesn't have the answer to, you know, every situation, every question. So I think uh, in that sense, therefore, I don't think, uh, you know, in any ways, vulnerable means being weak. Mm. And of course, you know, end of the day, finally, the buck will stop at the leader, right? Or at the leadership team while uh, 
uh, responding to crisis or conflict situations. So I, I don't see any dichotomy in being vulnerable and yet being, uh, you know, being able to do your job and also dealing in difficult situations. Wonderful. That's such a refreshing thought. And I, I hope everyone starts um, understanding that. Uh, and I think, you know, what, what you said about right at the beginning, current state of leadership, uh, especially with VUCA environment, um, you joined your new organization in the middle of pandemic. Uh, you know, remote hybrid working models were, were the norm of the day, are the norm of the day. Uh, and then focus on mental well-being um, is, is taking center stage. And, you know, we, we also earlier discussed uh, issues around burnout uh, or or being out of the rat race uh, for a few people. Do you think there's a greater onus on leaders uh, to demonstrate empathy? And when, you know, you, you rightly put at the beginning, it's about, emotional intelligence about putting yourself in someone else's shoes. But do you think there's there's a greater onus on leaders per se today? Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, as I uh, as I see it, actually, uh, Angela, you know, the there has been a dramatic transformation in all the three W's, right? Uh, if you look at the way work has changed, the way, you know, workforce uh, you know, is changing or has changed, and also the implications for our workplace, so all the three W's. Each of these have uh, undergone tremendous changes, you know, during the last uh, two years, especially during COVID times. I think, uh, you know, the fundamental nature of work has changed a lot with, uh, of course, changing customer dynamics. Uh, there is also all kinds of new competition emerging, you know, and of course, there are so many uh, new trends of, uh, you know, digitization, automation, et cetera, et cetera. So I think each of these uh, have direct implications of uh, for how and where we perform work. Mm. Uh, now, uh, we actually still don't know how this whole remote or hybrid model will work for organizations and people. I mean, every company is experimenting, uh, trying out different approaches to flexible work arrangement, but one thing is clear, you know, there cannot be one size fits all approach uh, which will work. And uh, we also need to recognize, Angela, that every job and person is not remotable, right? And mm. a job and person is not synonymous. And there will be contradictions where, let's say, my job can be performed from home, but my personal situation must might not allow me to do so. Right. Or I might be a very social person who thrives when I'm you know, working with people around me. Similarly, you have situations where you have, let's say, new colleagues, new employees, even somebody like me, you know, who's new to a company, who needs to be on site to imbibe the culture, who needs to, you know, look at how things get done in a company, you know, observe seniors and learn, get coached. Uh, so what I would say is, you know, we, 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 we still need to find, you know, uh, what approach would work. But I think uh, it's clear that the way we worked in the past will definitely not work uh, in the future. So that's clear. But uh, uh, so therefore, uh, you know, I have no doubt that actually for a leader to navigate through this, I would say, uh, uh, you know, they just need not be empathetic. But I think more importantly, they have to be very, very agile and most importantly, very, very grounded. Mm. No, I agree. You couldn't have put it uh, better. I think it's it's changing and not having that bias to certain reactions or circumstances uh, remains important. And therefore, agility comes at the forefront. Uh, and also being compassionate and empathetic towards different situations uh, and different people become important. But do you think, or have you rather uh, seen where... where showing empathy or compassion uh, sometimes uh, and it could it could go back to being emotionally intelligent uh, be mistaken for a leader's inability to take tough decisions or make may be more assertive oh uh, well uh, you know it depends on you know how you translate showing empathy and compassion right and i think that matters so for me the more uh, I think important thing is uh, actually how as leaders we create, uh, I would say, psychological safety in our organizations and combine that with stretching our people, you know, which I believe is, you know, the uh, 
uh, I would say the the secret sauce for creating you know high performance teams. So uh, so leaders and organizations which do not create you know the high psychological safety, but just create stretch, uh, you know, end up creating stress, right? And uh, you on the other side have companies which maybe are very soft, create high psych psychological safety, but with low stretch or you know no stretch. And actually, that creates uh, uh, situations where people, uh, you know, get into comfort zone. So I think uh, for me, high performance comes when you can create the right level of uh, psychological safety and high stretch. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I do not see any dichotomy in being compassionate and yet being assertive. As I said, end of the day, it's about uh, what happens when you create empathy or when you display empathy, you display compassion. In end of the day, I think if that translates to high psychological safety, I think that's the output that as leaders we should all you know look for. So, so in fact, I would say, uh, Angela, frankly, you know, for somebody like me, for example, who's still new to the role, when I'm empathetic or when I'm compassionate, actually my assertiveness will be better accepted and it'll be much easier for me to take tough decisions because people will understand where I'm coming from. So I would say. Again, uh, I don't think uh, that you know being uh, you know displaying empathy or compassion uh, impacts somebody's ability to be assertive and take tough decisions. Hmm. Interesting, but Sanjay, you've been a part of different organizations, different sectors, uh, diverse geographies. You've led diverse teams. You've had diverse mentors, uh, and then. You know, you've been exposed to so many different people and situations. I, I always feel there's there's this off there's this debate uh, often about what is more important, IQ or EQ, um, and why you know IQ is undoubtedly vital. Uh, do you think today, uh, or are, or has EQ become more over the time more important or vital in differentiating between? effective and less effective leaders. Have you seen that? Have you noticed that? Uh, well, I think from my perspective, I think both are important and uh, I think complementary. Uh, of course, you know, especially if you have low EQ, it will certainly be a, a leadership derailer. At least that's been, you know, my experience over, especially the last, you know, 10 odd years. Mm. Uh, especially with the nature of workforce changing, you know, and you know, we have, for example, the Gen Z, and you know, we have all kinds of, you know, social media uh, proliferation and so on and so forth. So with with that panning out, and in a way, with you know, new generations coming into the workforce, you know, I believe, uh, you know, we as leaders need to evolve ourselves too. So of course, you know, I would have to change myself. I I, I really don't expect the large part of my organization, you know, to, to, to change, uh, you know, with, with, with the new dynamics panning out. So, but having said that, I think uh, it also depends on the cultural context in which a leader operates, right? So for example, uh, Angela, the way leadership is viewed, say in India, may not be the same or is not the same, let's say, mm. uh, in Japan, where I worked or let's say in, in, in some of the, you know, Western world countries. So, right. There are also differences in culture between companies. So I would say, you know, uh, for leaders who are able to contextualize the culture and then appropriately leverage IQ and EQ will become more, uh, more effective. So I don't know whether I answered your question, but the mood point that I wanted to communicate is that, uh, you know, both are important. Mm. Uh, it depends on the context you are operating at. But definitely, you know, if you don't have EQ, there is a very high chance that you don't succeed mm. uh, going forward. No, I agree. And and in your context, perhaps an extent extension to to what you said. Um, and I agree, different cultures, different contexts. You know, it's it's you've put the nail on the head. Uh, but at leadership levels and perhaps in the India context or, or the bro broader South Asia context, do you think organizations are, are now increasingly prioritizing EQ over IQ uh, while making a hiring decision or a promotion decision or succession decision? So internal, external, both. Do you, do, have you seen that happening? 
yes, uh, I mean, uh, you know, both of these are kind of must-haves, I think, uh, in, in the way work will emerge in the future. Well, from my personal experience standpoint, let's say, for example, in my current company, we look at both. So, of course, we have a framework of assessing people, you know, when we look at people, you know, for new roles, uh, either from within or, you know, external, you know, we look at them uh, and evaluate them, of course, uh, in a framework on, uh, you know, leadership competencies linked to the given role. But of course, very importantly, we do consider factors uh, like EQ, you know, learning agility, aspiration, cultural fit, I, I think, again, is a big piece. Uh, so therefore, uh, if you really think about any, how anyone develops, right, how each of us have developed uh, you know, over our careers, I think, uh, I think, I think everybody has, uh, you know, inherent intelligence, right? Uh, but that doesn't necessarily, Angela, you know, convert into into success so i think uh, you know intelligence when you know combined with effort over time really you know i think uh, you know translates to capability and to your point again just being capable doesn't translate into success so i think okay. the piece that is becoming more important is how do you leverage your capability and mix that up with eq which really becomes uh, you know the success mantra if i may say so 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 put it simply, you know, if you think about uh, IQ and and think about IQ uh, and then you add effort to IQ, you create capability and then uh, you leverage your EQ on the capability that you have and that I think uh, leads to success. So I think the point that I'm trying to make is that, you know, all of these are important. Uh, mm. uh, you can't have either or. Mm. Uh, but definitely, uh, as you rightly pointed out, you know, the piece around EQ is definitely becoming much more important mm. than it was in the past. Interesting. I I agree. And, you know, you couldn't have nobody. You couldn't have put it uh, better. If there's a balance that perhaps is required, um, and then you know, it it becomes contextual and it becomes important that you understand what works for you. Uh, one last questions enjoy um, and you know in in such a rich career of almost three decades uh, reflecting on your career uh, can you think of instances uh, or examples and i'm sure there are many uh, maybe one or two where, which reaffirmed the importance of emotional intelligence to you and helped you uh, evolve better as a leader yeah sure i mean i can just talk about my you know last one odd year with uh, you know Metler Toledo, and as you as you know, I joined uh, Metler last October, uh, right in the midst of the pandemic. And in fact, even till date, uh, after being in the job for about a year, I still haven't met 80% of our employees, you know, in person. In fact, I actually switched both industry and country when I you know joined Metler. So that's the context with which uh, you know uh, under which I you know had to operate and. Just after a few months after I took over, you know, we were hit by the second wave, right, in, in the March, April time frame. And uh, as as a leader, you know, end of the day, while I was still, you know, month three in the job, I had to take several calls to, you know, one, on one side, prioritize the health and safety of our employees, but also to manage business continuity. So, uh, so while I'm extremely pleased with the results that we've achieved this year, both on the business and people front, but I would give full credit to our people, you know, who showed tremendous character and resilience in, you know, during challenging times. So, so I don't know, you know, whether what I can say is, you know, I can look at the output and the results, which I think have gone our way in terms of the people and business results. Uh, so I would say that, you know, for somebody like me to be able to get in. Uh, integrate and in a way deliver in the world that we are living in. Like I said, I haven't met 80% of our employees, uh, which uh, further confirms and reaffirms, I would say, you know, how important it is, you know, to 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 be good on on the people front, and how important it is, uh, you know, to 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 really uh, be empathetic, be sensitive, and yet be mindful of business requirements and being balanced in the two. So I think. To that extent, I think uh, the last one year, I think, is a testimony to, from my own perspective, I mean, I have other examples as well, I, but 
just to your point, uh, you know, is a is a clear testimony, uh, uh, you know, about the importance of uh, emotional intelligence in you know making somebody successful uh, in 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 the context that he or she is in. Absolutely, and that's wonderful, Sanjoy. And I'm I'm sure you've done a wonderful job so far. I'm sure, you know, your teams. Uh, have sort of related and identified with you. And I'm, I, I hope things do settle down and you get to meet the rest of 80% in, in yes. person sooner than later. But uh, thank you, Sanjoy, so much for the wonderful conversation. I'm glad I, I could spend this time with you. And I'm sure everyone would find your experience, your thoughts very, very inspiring. Thank you so much once again. Thanks, Angela. Thanks very much. Uh, I enjoyed the conversation. Thank you very much.